Hey guys and welcome back to the Freeway Flippers. It's Casey and Liz and today we have a very special video. It's probably our favorite one to date. Um, we actually reached out to several other resellers, six to be exact. Um, some that are part-time, some that sell full-time, and even a couple of that full-time RVs and fund their travels by reselling on eBay. It's pretty cool. So grab a pen and paper. You're gonna learn a lot today. So let's get started. All right, so today's video is going to be awesome. We have six resellers that are going to give you tips about selling on eBay. Um, each one is going to have their own social media. I'm going to pop it up on the screen. Also leave their social media contacts down below in the description. So make sure you check them out. And if you're new to the channel, we are a couple that sell on eBay and Amazon. So if that's something you're interested in, please like this video and give us a follow and you'll see more content like this. So let's get started with reseller number one. Hello, thank you for having us Freeway Flippers, Liz and Casey. My name is Missy, also known as West Coast Gems. I'm Sam, known as West Coast Goods. And today we are going to be sharing a few tips for your eBay business. Well, tip number one, I would definitely have to say is going to be shipping and handling time. Um, with other platforms such as, you know, Amazon, um, buyers can go buy items and have them, you know, the next day, if not that same day. So um, since eBay added fast and free shipping, which a lot of people filter, um, I would definitely recommend having your eBay listing set to one day handling time and ship them out as soon as you can. Um, if you set your eBay account to have one day handling time and you offer um, free shipping, your items show up when people search fast and free shipping. And like I said, you know, with other platforms like Amazon, when you can have your item the next day, it is very important to uh, have your eBay account set to fast and free shipping. A tip that I would share would be to spend some time making sure that you are taking good photos. And to take good photos doesn't necessarily mean to buy a DSLR camera, some expensive equipment. Um, taking a good photo would include making sure your item is clean, uh, if there's wrinkles in the clothes, making sure you're ironing those out, just taking the extra time to make sure the item is presentable because this is how you're going to catch the attention of a potential buyer. Also, I would take your items, the photo on a solid background, so the main focus is the item you're selling. Um, I would also use an app maybe to edit the photo or at least your main photo because a well taken photo is what's going to grab the attention of that next buyer. And spend some time on your main photo. You don't have to spend a lot of time on you know each and every photo, but the main photo is what's going to get people to actually click your listing and you know see further details. So the, ma the first uh, main picture is the most important. Definitely. Um, my next tip is going to be cross-listing your items to multiple platforms such as, you know, Macari, Poshmark. Um, I know it seems time consuming, but it is really not. You can use um, cross-listing apps. I personally use Crosslist It. It is $9.99 a month and it is super quick, but you know, just not just having your item on one particular platform, why not have it on three? We've made that mistake and had lost hundreds of dollars yeah. not doing that. We slept on Posh mm -hmm. for a long time and now, you know, we probably do two or three sales a day on Posh. Definitely. So definitely, you know, cross list your items to Posh and Macari. And, you know, you even have Amazon, you can, you know, list some FBM, you can put them on Facebook Marketplace. Just the more places you have them, the bigger chance you have to sell that item. More eyes on your product. Another tip that I would share would be to continuously educate yourself. Um, use YouTube. Sam and I still watch YouTube videos to, uh, to learn, um, also asking questions from other resellers. This community is amazing and most of them out there will answer your questions. Just send them a DM. Um, or even take a course. We have taken several courses of our own, even one last month, right? The I've taken, Joe, a, few, yeah, yeah. I've taken a few just uh, this, I don't know, last couple of weeks. Yeah, so definitely 
educate yourself. It's not just going to come to you. You have to go out there and learn. And uh, YouTube is a great, great place for that. All right, last tip is going to be customer service. When someone messages you, yes. that means they are interested in your product. Don't wait four or five hours you know, to respond to them. Sometimes all they want is that one answer to their question and they're gonna mm -hmm. buy. Don't leave it up to someone else to respond quicker than you and let them get the sale that you should have had, but you didn't because you weren't quick you know, at responding. You can turn on notifications on your eBay app, so as soon as you get you know, a question, you get a notification on your phone, but sometimes the difference between getting a sale and not getting a sale is how quick you respond. And I didn't understand that at first. Um, I would get upset with Sam for always checking his phone. He'll have a notification and he'll go straight to his phone. But over the past years, I've realized that that means a sale. If you respond right there when they're asking you that question, mm -hmm. um, they jump on it and they buy that item instead of going and looking somewhere else. So. Yeah, good tip. Well, thank you, Casey and Liz, for having yes. us. Um, I hope we were able to help. Um, mm -hmm. If you guys ever have any questions, yeah. we're just a DM away, and we hope everyone is out staying indoors and yes. being safe. Yes, yeah, stay safe and stay home during this COVID-19 situation we're dealing with. Well, thanks for having us, guys. Bye. What's up guys, my name is Josh. I've been an eBay seller for about six years now, full time for somewhere around four. Um, I met Liz a few years ago and since then I've met Casey as well. We've become good friends and they asked me to help with this video so of course I had to. They asked me to help you guys with a couple of tips of what I've learned from over the years of selling on eBay. Things that I would recommend for someone just starting out. My first tip would be play around with a little bit of everything and figure out what categories you're going to sell in. It's very good to try a lot of different things like selling electronics and clothing and books and figure out which category you feel that you would like the most. You don't necessarily have to narrow it down later if you enjoy being a, you know, a jack of all traits and selling everything. But for me specifically, I enjoy clothing and I enjoy sneakers. And that is why I stick to those categories. But it took me a while to learn that. I played around with other things and found what was worth it for me. Once you figure that out, you can then narrow it down and play around with what you really enjoy and get better and better and better at that as you go. My second advice is going to be something that I learned the hard way over time. I got to about somewhere between 500 to 1,000 items on eBay back when I started. And that's because I deal in stuff like t-shirts. It's easy to find, it's cheap to buy, it's cheap to sell. You can get a lot of it. I didn't really have an organization system at all. I kind of just kept them in a pile. And when I sold something, I'd go look for it by color. I would just look at the pile and see what stuck out to me. If I sold a green shirt, I would look at every green shirt I had. And sometimes with that many items, I got to a point where sometimes I didn't find it. And it would take me a half an hour. I'd have to take everything off the shelves, look through it, and it was a huge waste of time. Since then, I've started doing this. I'll show you my inventory system and show you what I think is an efficient way to do it. With t-shirts, I used to keep them like this. I would approach the stack and just pick something, let's say the red shirt, pick that out. If you have 50 red shirts, that becomes a lot harder. Now what I do is stack it the same way, but each shirt has an inventory label. And as you can see, they run in order and have any notes that I would think would be helpful in the listing process. For shoes, which you can see the shoe wall here, everyone also has a label. I write that by hand, but this shoe, for example, is put in this box. So I know when I sell it exactly where it's gonna be, which is specifically hard if you have a thousand shoes. Those would be my two tips for starting out. Like I said in the beginning, it's not that important what category you sell in. You can refine that later. And organization, you don't have to do that at first if you have a low amount of items, but you should at least start thinking about how to plan that for later because you will end up with a huge headache that was possible to avoid. My name is Josh, and you can follow me on Instagram at Joshua J. Madsen, M-A-D-S-E-N, my first, middle, and last name. I post stuff about sneakers, stuff about traveling, and uh, yeah, that's a good place to get in contact with me. To Casey and Liz, I look forward to hanging out with you guys once this whole quarantine era is over, and I'll see you guys soon. Thanks for having me. Hey guys, it's Patriot Picker. My name is Chris and I am down in my eBay bunker. Uh, I was asked to share some information, maybe some advice and tips with you guys if you're looking to get involved in reselling. Before I do, you can find me on YouTube at Patriot Picker. Just type that in the search engine and you'll find 
uh, my videos, share with you the adventure that I've been on. And I've been on this adventure since September of 2019. I specifically sell on eBay. I do not use any other platforms at this time. You can find me on Instagram at PatriotPicker76. You can find me on Facebook. I don't really use Facebook that often, but I do have a page that is at PatriotPicker76. And if you'd like to chat sometime, send me an email. Love to get questions, love to get comments. PatriotPicker76 at gmail.com. Uh, Freeway Flippers, Liz and Casey reached out to me. They asked me if I'd be willing to make a little video and share a little bit of information that might be helpful. So we're going to jump right in and I'm going to give you a little bit of backdrop of um, some things that happened with me along the way and hopefully some of these things will be helpful. Now, I'm a newbie still. I realized that as a newbie, going into the eighth month now of April 2020, uh, I still make mistakes. I still ask other folks questions that are um, people that I follow on YouTube, people that I communicate with, other resellers in the family of reselling. And I will make more mistakes, and you uh, will make mistakes, and there's nothing wrong with that at all. That's how we all learn, and we're all at different places in our reselling experience and so uh, don't don't take it too hard don't be too hard on yourself because uh, there's a lot to learn most interesting things i love about this reselling uh, adventure is is just being your own boss and kind of running your own business and your own show so uh, a couple of things that were misconceptions that i had when i first started reselling I had been doing a lot of extensive research on YouTube prior to watching other folks like Cincinnati Picker and Commonwealth Picker and RVA Flips and uh, Lonnie at Shed Flips. and But uh, some misconceptions I had early on were that I thought that I could start off with a bang and in a real short period of time, uh, I'd become a rock star. When I say rock star, I don't necessarily mean a YouTube sensation. I just mean a big seller. I thought I was going to make a lot of money quick, and that is just not the way it works, guys. Um, do not go into it thinking that you're going to strike oil or strike gold. Uh, it doesn't happen that fast. If you listen to other resellers share their stories, you'll find out that a lot of folks have been doing this for years, 8, 10, 12 years they've been doing this stuff. It takes time, so just remember this is a, a marathon. This isn't a sprint. The way I would describe it is as a marathon, it's baby steps. You take one step forward and you do the best you can, and sometimes you might take two or three steps back. You're not going into it to uh, become the greatest sensation overnight. The real reason that you should go into reselling is because you like it. You love what you do, and it's got to come from the heart. It can't be that I'm just looking for an opportunity to become famous, or I'm looking for an opportunity to make uh, $100,000 a year. You, you have to go into it and actually like what you're doing because it is a full-time job. I'm gonna park right there for just a second and I'm gonna say that again. Don't think just because I told you I was a part-time reseller that you only go and do this every now and then. This is something that you have to do as a full-time job all the time if you want to turn it into something bigger than just a hobby. Another one of my misconceptions was that I didn't do a whole lot of educational research on shipping. You better get your head around shipping because if you don't, it's going to eat you alive. It is going to chew you up and spit you out financially and you're going to find yourself in a world of hurt and you're probably going to get discouraged and you're probably not going to want to continue. You've got to figure out shipping and you've got to figure out whether you're going to do calculated shipping or whether you're going to do free shipping. I do calculated shipping. I started off, made the mistake of listening to some folks that said you ought to do all free shipping and I found out real quick that that was a big mistake. If you live in Phoenix, Arizona, hi Liz and Casey, you're shipping something down to Tucson that may not cost you too much shipping because it's right there in your home state. But if you live in Lynchburg, Virginia, like I do on the East Coast, and you're shipping all the way out to California, and you've got an item that you've listed for $10.99, and it costs $12.99 to ship it. Where's the common sense there? Where's the business savvy sense there that, that that's good? Some people believe that you can bake your ship your your uh, shipping cost into your price and then just offer free shipping, and they think that somehow that's going to draw more people to their items, and they're going to sell more and, and such. But at Calculated Shipping, I have had no issues. People are willing to pay for the shipping if if it's a good item and it's what they're looking for. So just keep that in mind. And another thing that you want to be careful of, early on I was taking my items that I went out and sourced, I was bringing them home, and to get my shipping costs, all I was doing is just laying the item up on the 
the scale and you know you'd get four or five ounces sometimes and you'd be like oh yeah you know i'm going to be able to ship this first class because it's under 16 ounces and it's not going to cost me much shipping and you know and i'm going to be able to make more profit because i don't have to pay so much shipping that was wrong because what you have to do is you have to take the item and you have to package it up and you have to put it in your box or your package you're going to ship it in and you have to put that on the scale you got to get the full weight of everything packaged up you can't just drop the item on the scale and then go hmm I think this box is probably going to weigh another two or three ounces. Believe me, just when you do that, you find out that your item weighs a lot more. And then you send it off and eBay ends up charging you extra in the long run. If you get your shipping wrong, they can eventually correct you by sending you a ni nice little email that says, Hey, if you don't get your shipping straightened out, uh, we've noticed you've been making a lot of mistakes with that and if you don't get that straightened out we're going to you know give you a little suspension for a while until you can figure out what you're supposed to do another thing that i want to talk about is and this is the good news this is the part that i love to talk about i never knew that it could be so much fun it takes a certain kind of personality obviously to get on youtube and make youtube videos uh not not everyone who resells needs to be on YouTube. I was a teacher for almost 12 years uh, of middle schoolers, and I gave uh, lots of presentations and also have worked in a community college as an academic advisor. I've spoken to tons of parents in groups uh, and such, and, and I'm not perfect. I'm not saying that I am in no way. I'm just letting you know that not everybody's cut out to be talking to a camera. And so just, just know you don't have to go onto YouTube. You just need to do great on on your reselling platform what i want to get at before i close is just simply the adventure the excitement and the fun i wish i had known about this years and years ago otherwise i would have done it then but i i just for whatever reason was caught up in my career and didn't really think too much about going into business for myself but here i am now and i'm gonna tell you guys once you get rolling in it it is so much fun you've got to like certain things you've got to like going out in the community and you've got to look for items to flip and you've got to be creative in how you go about doing that but when you do there's so much fun in it because it's like an adventure. You never know what you're going to discover by going out to yard sales, um, going to your local thrift stores, even so searching for stuff on Facebook Marketplace, uh, Craigslist. I've even heard of guys here recently that are actually buying stuff off of Macari and off of Amazon and then turning around and flipping it for more money. There's there's a lot of ways, if you're creative, there's a lot of ways that you can uh, you can make your money back. But you got to like the source and you gotta like to going out and you gotta like to be on the road and you gotta like to be interacting with people and uh, the reselling world of, of resellers is such a great group of people uh, get connected as much as you can like people's videos comment on people's videos reach out to them with questions they're here to I'm here people like me we're here to help you it's a great family and everybody so far in my experience has been willing to help out in any way they can and support what you're doing. I wanted to share my experience, to see the adventure of going out and finding stuff and then coming back and seeing how much that sold for. Uh, it's, it's, it's just exciting to watch and see how people are able to flip items. Uh, you never know what you're going to find. You can pay 59 cents for something and turn around and flip it for $30. It's just incredible. And the folks out in the community that are wanting this stuff, uh, just always be respective of the fact that you're working with real people on that other end that you're you're selling to. You've got to put yourself in their shoes and you've got to ask that question, what kind of customer service am I going to provide these people? It's got to be top notch, guys. There's nothing, don't settle for anything less, top notch. I have a 100% satisfaction guarantee as a reseller if you aren't 100 percent satisfied all you have to do is send me an email i totally refund your money no questions asked i want my customers to realize i'm looking out for them and that's something that you need to be very very cautious of when you go into this that's a little bit where i would give you some advice and tips and i thank liz and casey for allowing me uh, to share a little bit from my heart and my experience Hope you guys are doing well, and uh, we'll catch you guys again on the flip side. 
Hello, my name is James Williams. You can find me on Twitter at JHW Reporter, and you can search for JHWS Store uh, with two S's on eBay, and you can find everything I have to offer on there. I've been selling on eBay for just a little while now, still fairly new. Um, one thing that has really stuck out to me, to me the most, I would say, is probably the shipping. Shipping can be a handful, and it's probably the toughest part, I would think, at least for me. Uh, when I started out trying to figure the ins and out of everything, the people at the post office kind of know me pretty well just because I'm always kind of asking questions. And they've always been very helpful. So please, I would, uh, just to start off when it comes to shipping, and getting those orders in, um, don't be afraid to ask the people at the post office. They're more than happy to help you. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's the biggest thing. Don't be afraid to ask questions because you're not going to learn if you don't ask questions. Um, some things that I would suggest right off the bat is have an idea of what it is you're selling. If you're selling um, a lot of one thing in particular, like for me, it's either um, movies or video games or uh, some comic books some different things a lot of that stuff is going to be kind of the same um, you're going to get familiar with the weight of whatever a DVD is or how many if you have a bundle of DVDs you'll have an, a better understanding after a while of how much more that will cost compared to only shipping one so yeah, consider those things um, one thing I do is I'll go to the dollar store and I will find the uh, different sized envelopes they're usually pretty good pretty good deal we have the Dollar Tree or the 99 cent store in California so go to your you know go to your local dollar store or you know um, they should have some sort of shipping supplies to help you get started the post office obviously will have everything you need so that will that will kinda save you a little bit right there you'll be able to get a few envelopes if, like I said if you're doing DVDs um, or video games for example have a have a again have a good understanding of what it is you're selling um, how much you're putting into your packaging again with the envelopes the boxes um, shipping labels and all that um, I would also suggest maybe something I wish I would have known a little bit more about is um, a scale and a um, a printer to ship to print your labels um, a label printer I guess it can be a little expensive but considering how much time I probably would spend in in line at the post office um, it might actually be a better option to just go ahead and get the, the printer put the responsibility on yourself obviously to know exactly how much it weighs, um, making sure you're shipping it correctly, because if you don't ship it correctly and put the um, right amount of postage on it, you can get lost packages, things get returned back to you, a lot of things can go wrong. Um, again, that's probably why I personally am a little bit more comfortable going to the post office. I've had very little issues sending things by just, you know, having it pre-packed already, going to the post office, tell them exactly what it is, if it's media mail, um, you know, say you have DVDs, you can label it as media mail and it'll be a little bit cheaper, um, but it will take a little bit longer to reach its destination. Or you have first class or there's priority shipping. There's all different types of shipping, all different ways your package can be delivered, whether it's through FedEx, UPS, the post office. It's a lot. It can be a lot. It can be very overwhelming. Um, but I would say don't get scared. Start small, but have good products and you'll you'll be moving in no time and that's how it was for me I started just with DVDs start a little bit slowly kinda got familiar with it got familiar with what it is I was trying to do and accomplish and I was able to move on to a few bigger things to toys to comic books to um, bigger bundles of DVDs or video games so yeah start small don't start off selling bobbleheads and mega toys or whatever because then you're getting to bubble wrap you paying for bubble wrap, paying for styrofoam, uh, the little popcorn styrofoam, um, bigger boxes. Start small, get comfortable, and then see where where you want to go from there. Also, look into when you do get to those bigger items. Look into insurance. You don't want to have your packages get lost. You don't want to be on the losing end uh, of having a package be lost, and then you have your your buyer asking you for a refund, unable to find your package. You're out. However much money your item was so put a limit or, like, or have a standard of where you want for the amount you're willing to put insurance on I would say at least if you have an item that's like fifty dollars or more I wouldn't be afraid to spend a few extra bucks to 
um, get some insurance on that because if for whatever reason it gets lost things happen um, you don't want to be on the losing end so yeah and oh again um, at the end of every package that you send whether you do it yourself um, and you print your labels through eBay or whatever um, platform you're using or you go into the post office and ship that way you'll get a tracking number make sure you're putting in those tracking numbers when you're marking your items as shipped not only for you but for your your buyer will have an understanding of where their package is at and it gives you some sort of a, um, a security blanket in a way of saying hey I've sent it I've done my part your item is on the way and if there's any trouble or questions along the way um, you guys can always refer to that tracking number for more information again so there's much more that goes to shipping but that those are some of the basics I kind of went through a lot there um, but like I said you can reach out to me on on Twitter and Instagram at JHW reporter and I'd be happy to answer any questions that you may have or point you in the right direction Hey guys, it's Jay and Heidi Mills from the Red Reseller Podcast. And this is take 372,000. I, <laughs> I don't know. We're podcast people, not video people. But anyway, we travel full time in our 30 foot travel trailer with two kids, two dogs, and, and a, a cat. cat. And we use e commerce reselling to fuel the whole ride. Right. So you can find us on Instagram and Facebook. And our, we have a couple of accounts on Instagram. So we have Downsize to Drive, uh, that's Downsize with the number two drive um, on this account we use that one more for travel so whenever we go places we take pictures um, of our beautiful scenery that we get to see the amazing people that we get to meet and of course food that we eat we like food <laughs> that's right and then our other account is road reseller and that's where we advertise who's coming up next on our interviews on the podcast and show a little bit about thrift stores that we're going to things that we're finding and uh, especially the big stacks that we take to the post office oh, yeah. sometimes. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> so we also have um, an account on Facebook, and that is also Downsized to Drive with the number two. Um, and then we have an eBay store, and our eBay store is Football Freak 8515. And yes, you heard that right, Football <laughs> Freak 8515. And that's only because when we started this in 2003, he's a football freak, and I didn't know what else to make it. <laughs> So go check it out. Yeah. <laughs> there might be something really cool there for you. Could be. That's right. So we've been asked to give a couple tips, and we really appreciate the Freeway Flippers for putting us on here. And yes. I know, I hope you guys can learn something from us, because we know we're going to learn some from the other resellers on here. Mm -hmm. So the first thing is a tip that we would give a new person. And what would that be? I would say uh, start day one as a business. That's right. Like just jump in and start it. That's right. And think of it as your business like any other thing that started out there construction or a high-rise condominium owner I don't know whatever the business is that you want to start this is no different Start it as a business and why what I mean by that is know all your numbers you know learn the business uh, when you start you're gonna have a limited amount of things that you can sell and it's a good time to learn the eBay fees the PayPal fees how much it costs to ship different size of items and weights um, learn all that stuff and it'll help you when you're out sourcing for that because you'll know those numbers in your head we even have an app that we use on our phone and if you want to know about that just message us and it kind of will give you your profit levels on things that are out there but know your numbers and use it as a business it will help you it will grow fast right. and also um, one thing that we did was we kept track of everything so we started an Excel sheet and if you guys want to know about that messages um, and I'll even show you the one we have but we keep track of everything that we buy the costs mm -hmm. um, how much the fees were how much we it, we paid to ship it um, and then our return on investment and we keep all that and track it so we know things that sell really good got a good return on things that didn't sell so good maybe we lost a little bit of money don't pick those things up again <laughs> and it will teach you a lot of things if you run it like a business and know your numbers yeah um, and we don't have a lot of places to uh, store things so we kind of get things that flip pretty fast and um, our storage literally is underneath our bed that's our storage and we have a couple of tubs that go in the truck but that's really it that's right and that leads us to the tip that we wish we knew when we very first started. How to research better. That's right. When you start, research, research, research. research. And we did not. 
No. We went and bought. <laughs> and that's the fun part of the this process is going out and finding the treasure, buying the treasure and bringing it home. And then sometimes when you bring it home and then you look it up, you hang wah, your head. Wah. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> so we have specific ways that we research because we can't store a lot of items and yeah. take it with us. And we like our stuff to move really fast. And there's a lot of different ways that you can research. If you have a store, there's Terapeak on eBay. Or if you're just at home, you can research any category you want. What category would you like to? Clothing. No, not clothing. We want some, a category. Come on now. <laughs> jewelry? Jewelry. I'll take jewelry. Okay. So you can type in the search on eBay and put, you know, vintage jewelry and then start filtering for things, you know, um, a price point that you want to get above $25, $50, $100. Um, there's other filters like sure you can you can filter um, color yeah. you know if you want a certain color of jewelry uh, you can also filter at the length of it of, of the necklace you can have choker anywhere from choker to really long so yeah and you can do this in any category but do those filters and then get on there and see what's sold above that price point that you're looking for and remember the brands remember the colors remember the links mm -hmm. things like that and then when you get out there and source it'll catch your eye faster yeah. and if you do this in several categories um, it'll make your sourcing trip a little bit quicker and you'll know things that you can look up really fast and we've learned that from a lot of youtubers where I'll just hear a brand that they're talking about or things like that and then when we're out we hear it we see it and we check the comps while we're there yeah and that's it, a true story it definitely helped this reseller community they will help you the information is out there um, and it's free just learn research everything you can but most of all you know don't be scared to jump in and have fun you know it's it, it is a lot of fun once you get going uh, it does take work but it is a lot of fun that's right and once again we really want to thank the freeway flippers for putting this yes. all together and we we know we're going to learn stuff from the other resellers that are on here we learn something every week every on our time. podcast and it's always something new i don't care how long you've been in the business you're going to learn something new and uh, it's a fun thing to do. It's a lot of work, but it's a fun thing to do. And you can be successful if you take the tips on this video and run with it. Yeah. So that's all for us, guys. And uh, check out the podcast. Definitely check out the Freeway Flippers and their YouTube because we've learned a lot from them. Yeah. And thanks we'll, a lot. Yeah. We'll catch you later. Bye. What's up, YouTube? I want to thank Casey and Liz for having me on this video. And I'm going to share a few reseller tips here for you for beginners. My name is Brad. You can find me at BradJ144 on Instagram. So one thing that I'd like to start off talking about is you have to be excited about your item. If you're not excited about your item, you're not going to be wanting to sell the item. This item has to excite you. You have to be interested in if it, whether it's shoes whether it's antiques, whether it's board games, what are something that you are interested in, it has to excite you. So you're willing to put in the time to list it, to get everything done you need to sell the item. One thing I wish I would have known when I start, first started selling stuff online is to make sure you have all your inventory organized and know where it's at at all times and how long it's been in inventory. That way you want to change up prices. You can drop prices after it's been in inventory too long and you can know when to get rid of items so they don't sit there for four, five, six months in your inventory. The name of the game is to go through your inventory fast so you can keep the cash flow going. Thanks again, Casey and Liz, for having me on. All right, guys. So now it's our turn to share a few tips of what we have for selling on eBay. The first one is going to be having good lighting for photos. Yeah. It doesn't have to be anything expensive or special. You can get some pretty cheap lights or inexpensive lights on Amazon or even Walmart. Um, for example, this is going to be a bad photo and this is going to be a good photo example. I know that Misty West Coast Gem, she already touched on the importance of photography and making sure that your very first image that people see when they're scrolling through eBay is nice, crisp, and clear. We recommend on top of that having good lighting so that way your photo catches people's eyes and the better the main image photo is, the more people are going to click, click on it and that's why lighting is so important. 
Another bit of advice from us is don't let your death pile grow too big. Or we had a death box, but right. a death pile is in the reselling terms where you go out and you start buying a lot of product because it is exciting and it's fun to go out and buy things. And then all of a sudden you bring them home, you don't photograph them, you don't list them, they're sitting there and you just have this giant pile of stuff that you should be listing to try to move and make money on. So don't leave a death pile. Whatever you do, try to get into the habit of maybe listing a couple items a day and then that way you're not so overwhelmed with a lot of items, but don't let your death pile get too high. Yeah, we've heard a lot of other resellers say that if you list consistently every day, your item actually gets shown more in front of people with the eBay algorithm. So something also to consider. So if you go out and source 20 items, maybe you list five a day over the next four days and uh, do it that way so it's not as overwhelming when you get home. Okay, so tip number three would be, which is something we did not do when we first started selling on eBay. I didn't take it very seriously and I would just go out and thrift and list it and sell it and ship it. I didn't know our numbers. So I think tip number three would be have a good inventory spreadsheet. And because we're getting the chance to kind of redo our eBay business, from scratch, uh, if you're new to the channel, we just got done full-time RVing, we bought a house, we are able to now start over with our eBay account. We found a spreadsheet online and we'll go ahead and link it down below. And the spreadsheet is really good because you actually can sync all of your eBay inventory, your items sold, and it gives you details. So yeah. when you are just starting out, it is really important to know if you're even making a profit. With the spreadsheet, you can know what your item cost, how much it sold for, how much shipping was, PayPal charges, final value fees, and then anything else. And then you're left over with your ROI, which is your return on investment. And why that's so important is if you are buying items that aren't making any money, that doesn't make sense. You can also create your own Excel sheet. We don't know Excel that well, and there's a lot of fees that do go in along with selling, not only eBay fees, but PayPal fees, shipping fees. This pulls that inventory, or the uh, API automatically from eBay, and all of your sold items go in automatically. So it's very convenient. It's actually, I believe, certified by eBay. I think we paid 45 bucks. So we do have an affiliate link down below. So if you sign up, I think we get $5. So we do appreciate that. For the time it was gonna take us to design and build that thing, 45 bucks was a no brainer for us. And that was the biggest thing. Cause I remember when we were selling before and had a spreadsheet I made, like Casey said, we're not Excel people. And I was missing out on some of the fees. So I think that having something, we don't mind paying for something that's valuable and it's gonna save, save us time in the long run. Just in our opinion, an investment and it's something good to where, you know, we can look through and we can sort and figure out is men's clothing making more of a profit for us? Are women's uh, shoes, are they a good buy? So really having that data to then be able to figure out, okay, I know my return on investment and I know which items I'm going to start looking for even more when I go through. Yeah, the, some of the tips earlier was treat this like a business and that's one tool that definitely will help out, especially when it comes to tax time. Um, your CPA will appreciate you. Yes. All right, guys, we hope you really found this video of value. Leave a comment down below. Let us know a tip or something that you learned from the different resellers that we had in this video. And we definitely want to thank all of the resellers for taking the time to send us a video and hopefully it'll help all you guys out that are watching this. I know we learned some things from it. And when you're first getting started reselling online, there's a lot of information on YouTube. So we hope this kind of narrowed down some of the topics that maybe will help you get started. So once again, we appreciate, thank you, thank you, all the resellers give them a shout out on their social media accounts. We're the Freeway Flippers. Hit that subscribe button. We'll catch, catch you on, on the flip. flip.